deception, honor, and betrayal, the game begins anew when the epic series Game of Thrones returns. Just one part of your free preview of HBO Max. You'll experience all the must-see originals and the biggest Hollywood movies you won't want to miss. Watch it all anytime. There's nothing else like it. Don't miss a free preview of HBO Max Friday, March 29th until Monday, April 1st. Sign up for HBO and Max and get your first month free. Call 601-8992 or visit CableBahamas.com to subscribe today. It's Good Friday and you're watching NB12 broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Good evening Bahamas, I'm Nakia DeVoe. Here's what's making news tonight. The opening ceremonies mark the official start of the Carifta Games. BPC officials speak on the implications of a no vote, but the Prime Minister says he's not counting on oil revenue, plus our quest for the perfect Good Friday hot cross buns. Those stories and much more on the way. Your NB12 starts right now. Joining us here at NB12. The 2013 Carifta Track and Field Championships officially kicked off tonight with a grand celebration. Organizers are expecting a full house at the Thomas A. Robinson Stadium for tonight's opening ceremony and the rest of the Easter weekend. Today, Bahamians flocked to the box office at the Betty Kelly Canning Aquatic Center in hopes of getting their last minute tickets. We anticipate that there will be something like 17,000 people in the stadium. Uh, we advise that the stadium has been sold out completely. The, the stadium seats 15,000 people, but security coordinator for the 2013 Carifta Games, James Carey, says additional seating arrangements were made and they took into account the 30 vendors and their teams, the athletes and the officials on and off the field. Well, there has been a lot of political squabbling in recent months over the Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium's construction and maintenance. However, Prime Minister Perry Christie says none of that will matter tonight as the 42nd BTC Carifta Games get underway. 559 athletes and even more supporters from 25 countries are in town for the big event. After touring the $30 million facility this week, Christie told NB12 he could not be more proud. The driveway, the landscaping, the topography, um, it was just a good feeling. And in the stadium itself, um, as a former athlete, I had to observe that I could not have imagined that one day I would be able to, as an athlete, Bahamian athlete, in the Bahamas, have a stadium of that kind. And so it really enabled me to appreciate what the athletes today must feel like being able to perform on, in such a stadium before the Bahamian people. Now the Bahamas and Jamaica are the only two countries fielding full teams. The Prime Minister had these words of encouragement for Team Bahamas. The Bahamian people will be supporting you. All we want you to do is your best. I know some will win, some will lose, but we just want you to do your best and we will be happy with your performance. And remember this, once you've done your best, next year you'll come back and do better. And next year, if you don't get it this time, you'll get it. And that's how it happens. And so, look, it's a wonderful thing for us. It's a good time in the Bahamas. It's a wonderful stadium. We can have a great event. If you plan to attend any of the sessions this weekend to see those athletes in action, then you may want to pay close attention to this story. Traffic management will be a high priority for traffic police over the next few days, according to officer in charge of the Royal Bahamas Police Forces Mobile Unit, Superintendent Ken Strawn. Strawn says officers will be at all major intersections surrounding the stadium directing traffic, including the newly opened access road from the side of NIB opposite Cordo Avenue. We will have that area of Yellow LOA or Bahama Games Boulevard by Government High School. Uh, also, the new road coming over from um, that area by Staple and Gardens from the Bethel Avenue north to the Six Layer Roundabout. We also have right along the Thompson Boulevard area and by the Sahari Oaks Monument. And all of those arteries, Russell Road, Morse Road, Russell Road, Bainback, McDonald's, 
all that area around Ponciana Drive. All of those are key corridors that we would be paying attention to. Police will also be very strict about parking and officers will be out in full force directing motorists to approved parking areas. However, they did not detail where the approved parking areas are, but Strawn says there will be paid parking lots and free lots. He discourages motorists from parking in dark or bushy areas. We'll do another assessment of the lighting around the exterior of where the events will take place and our efforts to ensure the safety and the well-being of everyone who chooses to come into this area. Notwithstanding the fact that we'll be paying attention to those mischievous persons who have that tendency to want to use opportunities to either vandalize persons' private property or even attack persons who will be um, trying to make their way to this family wholesome uh, activity for this weekend. But their corrupted duties are not limited to the stadium. Mobile officers will escort athletes from all countries through the streets of New Providence. From the respective holding areas, game villages, to the venue, um, as the, uh, the management team with respect to our local corrupted um, team members have been indicating to the public, no need to go and look for your loved ones at the game village site. Those sites will also be policed and they will be placed properly on the requisite transportation and under escort brought to this venue. Organizers say roadmaps which highlight the entrance and exit points around the stadium will be available and all sections will be clearly marked. The opening ceremonies for the games include a number of Bahamian musicians, dancers and performers. NB12 visited the stadium during the last minute preparations to find out exactly what went into pulling off the four hour show. From the sound checks. Two. Hey, hey. Yeah. To the setting up of the music stage, the last minute lighting checks and the transformation of the stadium's center field into a giant performance stage. We got to see some of the behind the scenes action. For the past few days, workers have been putting the finishing touches on the stadium and preparing for tonight's festivities. So we wanted to have uh, an opening ceremony that was entertaining and that would enhance the Caribbean spirit that we've been trying to promote. And um, also we wanted to showcase Bahamian culture. We wanted to showcase our youth. Chairman of the organizing committee, Basil Christie, said his members started planning the ceremony in early January. Putting together the actual lineup and rehearsals for the program took six weeks. Christie said everyone worked day and night to make sure tonight's event was a success. We went to the best artists in the country, the best choreographer, the best music director, the best band director, the best marching band, and we put together a junk, a junk little group that's going to be the best you've heard. And we spent a lot of time on this. Later on this evening, spectators will enjoy an all-star concert featuring Visage, Gino D, Veronica Bishop and D-Mac, along with several others. Tonight's event was produced by musician Fred Ferguson, who also has something special planned for everyone who's at tonight's ceremony. Fred Ferguson and his crew have produced a song called Caribbean Unity, and it's a combination of different uh, different vibes of the Caribbean. It's likewise spectacular, and the public is going to be able to buy copies of this. I mean, know everybody who's visiting here is going to want to take them back to remember career after 2013. Tune into NB12 weekend tomorrow night for scenes from the opening and the start of this weekend's Carifta action. Still to come on NB12, the Bahamas Petroleum Company CEO speaks out amidst much controversy surrounding his company and oil drilling in the Bahamas. Uh, the government hasn't had to invest a penny. The company's taken the, uh, to, taken the risk. And unfortunately, they obviously either drilled in the wrong place or... The and the Prime Minister says oil isn't even on his radar yet. There is no basis whatsoever at this time here for me to build in to the thinking of the government of the Bahamas oil revenues. Stay with us for those stories. We'll be back.